Hello from beautiful Edgewater Park <laughs> on this fine Thursday night. Um, I'm Jeff Redding and this is the bag. Tonight, um, we've got what I think can easily be called one of the quirkiest, silliest, most fun bands that we have here in Cleveland. Um, Adam, Kate, the Baker's Basement. Where's the rest of us? <laughs> it's just us. Oh, it's just us. The, 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 the Baker's Basement. So, All two of us. Um, how, how did the Baker's Basement become? Uh, let's see, let's see. The year was 2011, and uh, we went to a recording school. Kate was from Cleveland, and I was from Northern Virginia, and we met at a place called the Recording Workshop. So it was a crash course in recording. So and four-week program. Four-week program, and that's where we started writing songs and learning how to record music together. So it was about a year later I moved out to Cleveland, uh, 2012. January 8th I moved out here from D.C., and that was kind of a... That's when the journey really began. Yes. So. <laughs> so <laughs> the name Baker's Basement, I have to assume, because it began in a Baker's Basement. It did. Mm, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people think it's the last name. Like one of our names is, is Baker. Baker yeah. But no, no. Yeah. It, you know, our first rehearsal area was in the basement of a bakery. Um, so yeah, it was kind of our sacred beginnings. How did and you so, swing that? I mean, how did you get a bakery to allow you to rehearse in their basement? A uh, good friend, a good friend, and someone Kate's known for a Making long time. <laughs> so okay, yeah, okay. and so she would, she would used to make us all these delicious treats while we would rehearse. Mm -hmm. So when we had discouraging days, there was always the bakery above us. Well, that's so, very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I've, got, I've got a little surprise here. Ooh, that I forgot to bring out before. <laughs> bakery. Um, yeah. That's we have to talk about it. Oh, nice. Oh, no, it's missing an eye. Yeah, ours does too, though. <laughs> yeah, so we have one of our favorite ones is missing an eye as well. So, tell me about <laughs> the snails. Did the song come from the, the, the people, or did the people come from the song, or how did the whole thing about snails come about? You're talking about the song, Two Snails? Well, that and everything else. I mean, yeah, the whole, because, yeah. you know, <laughs> on your website you say, hello, snails, you know, and, yeah. and so I just need to know where snails fits into Baker's Should Basement's we show life. Yeah, you could. All right, so uh, oftentimes when we brainstorm songs, or anything really, videos, uh, we start with a blank piece of paper, a poster board, and markers, and we just start drawing. That's that's a good way to start a brainstorm, is just free-wielding drawing. That's and, an interesting and way we were, to song, too. That's mm -hmm, cool. Yeah, visually, color, you know, have fun. Don't, don't you know, loosen up a little bit. <laughs> um, it happens a lot of different ways. But at the time, we were kind of looking for a mascot or something fun to represent the band. And so we were drawing and playing with the letters BB. And then we realized that two Bs climbing up a wall kind of looked like two snails. Two lowercase Like a lowercase B. Yeah. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. B, B, Baker's <laughs> Basement. So, yeah, it, it really is connected to the, the lowercase B. And so we're like, we could roll with that. And, and also like a slow and steady pace. Like we felt like it was very symbolic. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We, we knew it would be a journey for us and we were kind of committed to the long haul of it. So, um, so yeah. They're fun. They're aesthetically pleasing, a snail. So. <laughs> yes. And, 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 and. Yeah. Hold it? Very mathematic too. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> speaking of snails and and the songs that you write, um, like I said, you know, you guys are very whimsical. I mean, you sing about everything from lemonade to walking in the rain to death to wild sheep. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And your songs, um, in particular, like two snails was the first place I heard it, but then there were other ones as well where you bring in nature sounds. You have an interminably long cricket um, runoff groove after two snails, which I think is very cool. Oh, yeah. And I kept on waiting for it to go to the next song. Yeah. The first time I listened to it, I was after like, two snails, there's crickets. Yeah, oh yeah. Is that the last song in that album? That's Maybe. probably what that was. It okay. might, it yeah. Might be. yeah. Yeah. Those first few albums, we like to have long endings. Yeah, but, we love sound effects. But, but I thought that was really cool. And then in other songs, you've got birds and things like mm -hmm. that in the background. So uh, yeah, what, we have a what, song called Adrift where we recorded the lake 
Okay. You know, it's kind of gets nautical theme to it. So yeah, we went out to one of these. I think it was Huntington Park one day, and we just took our microphone and recorded the water. So, so, so what gave you the idea to include nature sounds in in the music that you do? Because I, I you're not that kind of a band that mm. does you know nature type folk songs, mm. but yet when you put them in there, it works. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Just instinctually, we always have our recorder going. Like, look at how, like, this would be a really cool sound effect. This would, and then we kind of have, like, a huge sel- selection of sounds that we, yeah, we have a library from time to time. <laughs> so, yeah. I think our minds are just kind of always working in that way. Yeah. It grounds us. I and mean, we, we love going outside to parks. We love we love being here right now. This is, like, the perfect day. But, yeah, like, when, uh, when we need to figure things out, we take to the woods. We take Nature to a people. path. And inevitably, we're like, you know, that would sound kind of cool in a song, you know. Mm-hmm. It seems like it has a relation to this particular sound effect. So uh, often a lot of our sound effects we self-record. Sometimes they come from libraries, but um, we think it kind of gives like a, a grounding medium to the music, you know. The human level, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when a song just has silence, like pure silence behind it, it kind of almost feels a little bit rigid, but as soon as you put a little something behind it, it just humanifies. Mm-hmm. Humanifies? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. You know what I mean. I, yeah. exactly, I know exactly yeah. what you mean. <laughs> um, I, I often look for... Well, like for instance, one of my songs I did, it was, I, it was called Brute X, when the, um, you know... The, the cicadas, cicadas were, yeah. Oh, nice. And I put cicadas behind the music and everything, nice. and that formed the natural rhythm yeah, yeah. for what was otherwise an instrumental piece. Yeah. So um, It's funny you brought that up. It's, I'm from Northern Virginia, so every 17 years, there's a huge hatching of all the cicadas. So <laughs> There's supposed um, to be a massive one this year. Like It's like the perfect storms, like they crisscross. Yeah, and, yeah I've heard about storm. that. <laughs> and they're supposed to be here, but I haven't seen or heard them, so I don't know if it's been here already and done, because obviously they're only around for a couple mm-hmm. weeks. And then right. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, big orgy of bugs and then they're gone and then they're gone yeah, yeah. just like mayflies I haven't mm. seen any mayflies they used to they used to like stick on my back porch on oh, yeah. the screen yeah. mm-hmm. and they just sit there mm-hmm. and that's all they do yeah. they <laughs> fly they sit they fly off they're gone uh, and mm. that's it and I haven't seen any of them in a while but I've seen I've bugs? seen an over of midges of fireflies oh, this year Mayfly- yeah, yeah there's a ton of fireflies yeah we have this. noticed that because it's been a while since since mm. I've, I've, I've seen them. So anyway, um, Kate, I'm going to let you describe your drums. Because <laughs> I could never to. do justice <laughs> to them. How did you come up with that concept and, and tell us all about it? Um, well, we used to do a lot of street performing, so a lot of busking, and it started with one bucket. So then from there... We were kind of like, oh, like I want more timbers, because I also used to play like a full drum kit, so I really like the different sounds and colorations. So it just kind of started as like an art project of how we can build from one bucket to two, and then one that holds the cymbals, and then one that sounds like a kick. So yeah, just yeah. a weird definitely an evolution art kit. Yeah, <laughs> and, then, and then you've got other things like the tambourine on there, and then yeah, the bells yeah. and you know things like that. You yeah. got you got a couple of triggers too, don't you? Yeah, I have one trigger on my. Uh, my kick, kick bucket which is my left hand <laughs> yeah um and your your silent partner who's not here <laughs> we should have brought him we um brought john's him. bones yeah um how did you hook up with him <laughs> you and know how did he become like a a part of your show it was a snowy day and we were walking through the woods and we found him buried under the snow and we felt that he needed a home so we adopted jones bones that day which happened to be around the time we wrote the song skeleton party and it, we really wanted to show him the song, but we also wanted to warm him up. You know, his bones seemed a little cold, so <laughs> we wanted to give him a new sense of life. You know, mm-hmm. so. So and and now he tags along wherever you go. Most that places. Way, yeah. Sometimes he needs a break from us. We often say on stage he really doesn't like most of our songs. It's just like <laughs> once you hear them being rehearsed a thousand times, he kind of grows tired of them. But there are a few in the mix that he enjoys. So. Mm-hmm. Um, but we give him a break from time to time. I would say he goes to about 80% of our shows. Okay. So. Um, so, so, so rumor has it that there's another band in town that looks exactly like you guys um, that plays huh. these baseball songs. Oh, not that uh, one. I've heard about that. What, what, what do you know about those guys? You know, we think we're better than them. We cover some of their songs from time to time. And they try to cover What are they ours? called? They even take the, the B thing. Baseball boogie band. The baseball oh, yeah. boogie band. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well... 
Yeah, we cover some of their songs, and personally, I think we do a better job, but, you know, they have things to say about that. They're a two-piece. It's really becoming a rival. Yeah, they're a two-piece, but they kind of dress up their base buckets, you know, the, the foundational buckets with a little bit of red, so it's, um, you know, they're really copycats. Yes, yeah, so you know, how, like, you, how did you come up with the orange motif? It, it kind of happened just fortuitously. Uh, Kate's original, your original drum kit was all orange. Yeah. And Before I ever met Kate, she had a drum kit that was orange. And it just kind of grew on us. You know, we were we were building out the structure for the, the bucket kit. And, you know, it was like, oh, let's roll with this orange thing. Seems it was like fitting a weird for color. us. We're a weird band. Yeah. It's oddly bold. Kind of quirky, <laughs> kind of awkward, kind of, what is this about? It seemed to fit us in a way. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if we ever really thought about it too much. We're like, oh, I guess it's orange. Let's roll with it. And it's going to become a part of us over the years. So, <laughs> so um, you know, I, I did an interview with Jen Poland the other day, and um, I brought up the topic of female-fronted bands because mm-hmm. over the course of the past month or so with what Thomas has been doing with the Northeast Ohio Women Who Rock mm-hmm. series that just wound up Saturday at the Bob Stop, um, to all these great female fronted bands and then the two bands that are duets you and duodecimal system yeah yeah yeah. but they're the opposite of you of you where melanie plays guitar Mm -hmm. and john plays drums where in this kate plays the drums and you play the guitar yeah yeah so um why do you think and, and you, in particular, coming from, from out of town, coming to Cleveland, why do you think that female-fronted bands are, are so, um, I don't want to say popular, but so um, influential around here? Mm. I mean, because there are, there's a lot. You, know? you got yeah. Rachel Short and Underwood. There's also Mr. Got, Gnome. You heard of those guys? No. Mr. Gnome is great. And you, yeah, you, she's you a female singer. Sly uh, Vixen, um, it's Kennedy Nagel, and, uh, you know, Munich of Garden, of course, Meg. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, Rachel, Becky Boyd. Mm. Uh, I mean, so many, you know, these female front bands in Cleveland. And yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful thing to see. Yeah. And, there's some, and, and, and there's some of the best bands in town are these female front yeah, I would say many years ago, because I was in an all-girl punk band when I first started. So, like, to see the, the difference now is pretty cool. Because, like, we were always, like, the one girl band around. I remember them being like, oh, like, if you're here, like, for the bands, like, you need to wait after. And, like, no, we and are. They were assuming that you were, like, band. a girlfriend of <laughs> yeah. one of the band members instead of, you know, those kind yeah. of assumptions. Yeah, so I don't really know, like, how it all started, but it's just exciting to see it. Yeah. yeah. Did you have any issues as an all-girl band as far as like people thinking that they can like get away with what they're not supposed to be able to get away with? Yeah, I would say so. Because <laughs> I, I, I can't remember, I, I don't remember what her name was now, um, but one of the artists that only played in Akron on the, in the Ohio thing. Okay. <clears throat> um, did a video and she's, I think she's 17 now, mm-hmm. and she said that, you know, it was always... They always have to like watch her back because you know people would try and hit on her. Thinking, oh, gotcha. You know, yeah, we definitely kind of had like a, a system of like looking out for everybody. Like if someone was talking to somebody by themselves, but like you had to kind of think like that back then for sure. Mm. I mean, you still do, but. <laughs> yeah, even when we started, I remember there was a couple of times. Yeah. Where some some stuff happened. Yeah, we always have like a buddy yeah. system. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, some people I swear you know it's just I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I heard that when Tegan and Sarah started, they ran into a lot of that. I think they were opening for, for Neil Young, and it was kind of like their first rodeo going across the country. But same thing, they had to deal with a lot of that bullshit yeah. that, you're, that you're speaking of. But uh, Yeah, so I mean, speaking of, um, do you have you guys toured? Um, did you, you, know, you play any place other than, you know, Northeast Ohio, I'll include Akron. Yeah. yeah. You know, we used when we started uh, years ago. We were doing a little bit of it, and then we kind of uh, grounded ourselves regionally. But this year, we're we're starting to head back out. Mm-hmm. So, so you uh, got a new album that you know you just mm-hmm. released, Wild Wild Sheep. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. If that's the name of the album. Yep. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's mm-hmm. what's what's on the cover. And Kate, I assume that you put in many, many, many hours making those covers. 
Oh, the handmade covers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the cotton ball, ball sheet. Yeah, the cotton those ball are sheet on the cover. <laughs> yeah. is, um, very happy to own one. <laughs> uh, every, every single one's a little different. Yeah, yeah. 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 and that's yeah, what makes it really characters. cool and personal uh, and everything. And I mean, and that just goes, that just goes to the quirkiness of you guys, mm-hmm. and and the personality and personability that you would even think to do something like that. Because, you know? yeah. I mean, you could have put that out on just a plain cardboard sleeve. Yeah, but that wouldn't be yeah. as fun. <laughs> well, yeah, and, see, and that's the whole, that's the whole point that, that I'm making here, yeah. is that you are just, a, you know, a fun band, and, and everything that you do, you know, it's like, you know, when, I, when I listen to your songs, it's like, a, a lot of them, they seem so sweet, and they seem so simple in a lot of respects, but there's other things that are in there that when you listen to it, it's like well, these aren't quite as sweet as yeah. Yeah, as, as they at first. <laughs> That's how we feel on about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Some of these songs are torturous for sure. We kind of give them uh, a brighter sheen at times, well, so they have a certain pep to them. Well, but. when I was mentioning you know, like things that you were singing about, you said death. Yeah, you know, it comes so, up a I mean, lot, man. There's a lot of death in our <laughs> yeah, music, and true. and yet you know it's very it's, it's acute, acoustic and everything. And and Kate, while while you can belt out a song with the best of them, a lot of times you just like whispering mm-hmm. and you know Crumbs. feathery vocals. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you how do you determine where you're going in you know like when you do a song? How do you put those together where you determine? where the feathery parts are going to be or whether the belt is going to be. Yeah, that's a great question. I think it's hard to say. I think it just naturally happens. Mm-hmm. Honestly, like when the belt needs to happen, it, it will just naturally go there. I think, but I do gravitate towards like a quieter voice at first just to kind of get used to the it. Bass the baseline almost. Part. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I would definitely say just like in rehearsals usually when we find like when the belt happens. Yeah, they usually start off very simple, and then we start carving out little details and, you know, kind of giving them more structure and shape. Um, yeah, I don't think a lot of it's, like, overly premeditated. Um, a lot of it's very playful at the start. Mm-hmm. Very uh, organic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do a lot of songwriting games. We talk a lot about this a lot in interviews, so I won't go too, too far down the rabbit <laughs> hole, but every February we do a lot of songwriting games. That's when we had the least amount of gigs and the most amount of time to write, mm-hmm. and it's like opening up a faucet, because sometimes we hold back a little bit throughout the year when there's show after show. There's not as much time to really flesh things out. When February hits, it's like all bets are off, Holiday. like we're, we're about to write, and the majority of the songs that show up on our albums, probably 80% happen during some February over the years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's then, like this like, big vault. I'll challenge him to games and he'll challenge me. So then by the end, like I'll have an album, he'll have an album, we'll have an album together. And then we can listen to all of it the last day. Mm-hmm. And then like figure Christmas. out which songs to put yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So um, do you both write lyrics and mm-hmm. both write music too? Yep. Or, yes. and together so, and separate. And yep. so, so how do you, how do you determine Who's gonna take and in, in the songs that you don't swap off on? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How do you determine who takes the lead on different songs? It, it's just kind of organic, I think. Mm-hmm. Is it, it based on makes... who came up with the lyrics for that song, or not, not necessarily. necessarily? No. I mean, we'll usually hit the record button and we'll start singing back and forth on ideas, and I think just whoever's voice really gravitates towards it and you can also just tell I'm like oh like this is definitely an Adam's like pocket emotionally and like physically like he should definitely take the lead on this and vice versa okay well, yeah. that's pretty cool so um I, I presume that this past February you had some more writing games oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so have you got enough for, for another album to come out or yeah yeah November okay. yeah November uh what is it 7th 8th 9th <laughs> Yeah, ninth. Yeah, November ninth. A lot of dates floating around, but yeah, it's called Down Down Domino, and so we've been releasing a song pretty much every month of this year, starting in February, and then like November is kind of like the crest of all that. Bandcamp or mm, everywhere, yeah, Spotify, Bandcamp, Spotify, Bandcamp. Uh, streaming. We're printing our for the first time. We're printing vinyl for it. Yeah. Um, so we're very excited about that. Uh, and then the party will be at Beachland Tavern. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we haven't officially announced it, so yeah, you heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's yeah, very Beachland cool. Beachland Tavern. So, all right, well, before we lose all the light and everything, I want to thank you guys for coming down. Thanks, and, Jeff. And, thank you for having and doing this. Um, I, I think that, you know, uh, you guys 
really brighten um, us whenever you play because you. you're just so much fun to see and and to listen to. And I hope for anybody that hasn't seen them, when you see their name out there, Baker's Basement, definitely go and check them out because you won't be sorry. They are a lot of fun. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> You'll get to meet Jones Bones as well. Mm -hmm. He doesn't talk much. But he doesn't. No, he does that well. Yeah. He said he's your silent partner, yeah. yes. which is probably best because you said he doesn't care much for your songs. And he yeah, might, we don't want him to talk. To yeah, he, he <laughs> might. He might fiddle with them a little bit and, yeah. and you know take away some of the fun. Yeah, he's a good counterweight to our all the noise we make. So. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Jake, Thank you so much, Adam. Baker's basement. Thank you, y'all. Good Mac Television. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> <laughs>